Don't be yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Channel 10. You guys are great. You just have to go up with I'll say it. Okay, good. Good. Where am I? Is this Monday? Yeah, I think so. And it's 10 bucks. Hey, why are you always doing this? I made a little bit. I said, you're going to win. All right. Look at you. I appreciate you guys getting my good angle on all the games. What do I just show up? Yeah. <laughs> Where's Rico? Where's Rico with his He's right next to you. <laughs> Last chance, Rick. No, I'm gonna see what's Maybe close to half. The lots are the lots are probably about 75% sold. It's about maybe half of half the house. Probably 40 Right now are does that sound too? You gotta talk like. I know. Just get George to talk tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still have some more. I haven't seen Skip yet. We had a. We had a. Be better than Joe's. Be better than Joe's. Oh, okay. Hey, well, I mean, I can get it. Oh, for that. I just want to. Do you think we're giving a bonus for getting that job? I'm going, what's the deal with a signing bonus? Oh, no, that's easy. Absolutely. That's what it's there for. Oh, sorry, this one, Carter.
pay tribute to the guys and the, the season that they had. Uh, very good season. Uh, happy with the way things turned out. But before we uh, get to them and start honoring them, I'd like to thank a couple people. Uh, first of all, I'd like Javi and Joey to come up here, please. There are a couple of guys that are behind the scenes and what Javi does the filming for us and when the year started out it was actually a pretty easy job. You know, you just kind of looked at the viewfinder and kind of followed, followed it along but needless to say about two games into the season the viewfinder went bad and so we said that's ah, not that big a deal. We can't get it fixed because we don't have time. So Javi did it but Carlos and I took it up to film the hug game one time. We tried, we about threw up for crying out loud. I mean, trying to follow it. So hanging in there and going everywhere with us, you know, he did a great job. And for that, we appreciate it. And uh, Joey here, if you noticed him at the games and stuff, he's a guy kind of sitting behind the bench with that computer looking thing, whatever, whatever it is. And when I first got the job, I, I didn't buy that thing. And Coach Andreessen said, we got this slick machine here. It does this, it does averages, three point shots, team to point, you know, whatever. And you can have it at halftime, it prints everything out here and that. So I said, great, because the only problem is the only guy in school that can run it is Joey Herzl. <laughs> so, you know, I told Manny Gia, I said, you better go look him up and pray to God he didn't have anything else going on. So uh, he was, you know, good enough to come and do that for us, but the problem be enjoys a senior this year, so we're either he's going to have to get trained, and I'm telling you, it's it's a big deal. It's not like he can just sit down and do it. So hopefully he'll train somebody, or maybe put you and LV off for a year or something. I don't know. So, uh, but again, we'd just like to thank him for doing that for us. Uh, the, the next guy that we would like to uh, thank and Vinny, if you could go up there and do that for a minute, is uh, Howard. Yeah. What Howard is, he, you know, he did the filming for Cat TV, but he did a lot more than that. I mean, he was at spring league games, summer league games, California games. I mean, he he pretty much did everything and. Not only did he do that, he made, you know, extra tapes for Coach and I to get so we could torture ourselves at night and things, things like that. But he also went about and made the players extra tapes and he, he did, you know, a great job with it. And for that, we got him a plaque here just to, uh, on behalf of the team and the coaching staff. We'd like to thank him. So they have to deal with those kind of things. And they're, 
they're used to it because we've been kind of doing this for a while. So, you know, <clears throat> if they're not at the game, they go, did you win? And that's about the extent of our conversation. Yes, it's like, oh, what are we doing? Like, no, it's like, oh, go to TV. So, uh, <clears throat> like I said, we would just, it's, it, it takes a lot for them to do that. And uh, we would like to thank them. And this looks real slick, like we did this on purpose, but those were supposed to be for our staff girl who didn't come tonight. But <laughs> looks good, though. <laughs> hey, if I wouldn't have told you, they would have, because they went, they went to help get the flowers. So it's not, not like it's a secret. So they would have heard it, they would have said, oh, nice flowers, and you would have heard it 50 times, though they were, weren't really supposed to be for us. So. season. Uh, season we finished 19-9, uh, and nine, which, and actually Mike and I were talking, you know, Durango had to forfeit those games because an ineligible player, Mike and I, are thinking about taking that one win, we could be 20-8. and eight. <laughs> So, we thought about it. Mike had the idea one morning, he goes, hey, did you read that about Durango? I said, yeah, because we're 20-8. and eight. <laughs> So, no, but going into the season, if, if you would have told me 19 and 9, you know, I would have been ecstatic. You know, I was figuring, you know, 50, right at 500, a little bit above. And not, and not because of who we had, it's just you're coming into a program doing things differently than I like to do, and <coughs> that Coach Andreessen didn't do, and for some of the guys, Coach Damon before that. So it was kind of a change. And, we expected a lot of different things from them, and it, but it, it was pretty early on that we knew as spring league went along, summer, then our expectations got a little a little higher, and with each with each passing game, they got a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and you know I think because I made the mistake of telling them, hey, you know we're, we're it's going to take a while, so I tell them that at the beginning of the season, then when we lose a close one, they're thinking. I thought this was going to take some time. So, that, so they're thinking that as it's going around, so I put my foot in my mouth. So uh, the season starts out, I'll just kind of over at Sparks and kind of the way our whole preseason went, actually. It's, we go over there, we go double overtime, and really looking back on it now, it probably was something that was very good for us. It's, you know, it showed them that what we were, what we were trying to accomplish would work, and and so they started buying into it, and, and that's part of it. And they knew that they could win and things like that. But <clears throat> to be truthful, I didn't need the whole preseason to go like that. I mean, I don't think I had quite that many games like that. So we ended up winning in double overtime, uh, have a couple other close games. We play Elko do fine. Fallon, we beat by two here. Then we get in cars and go over to Amador Valley. And so uh, you talk about every single game. we. For those of you who weren't there, we lose at the buzzer the first night. I mean, at the buzzer. So, but what was good is that was a good character check on whether we could bounce back. Because when you're, you're trying to accomplish things, sometimes you know they don't. Things don't go the way that you want it. And they they were able to bounce back, which I was pleased with because we come back the next night and I designed a great play with not much time on the clock and. Butner hit the shot at the buzzer. So uh, it was something that, so that we would lose one at the buzzer, win one at the buzzer, then we come back the next night or the next day, and a guy hits a three pointer at the buzzer to send it in overtime, and we win that one. So for <coughs> three consecutive games, I don't know if I've had or been involved in three closer than that, but those were quality teams that we played down there, and they actually, you know, in the long run, did, did a lot to help us. Uh, we went into the read term and probably played the, the best team that we've played all year, or you know the best team around that we played, Garfield High. And to to be honest, we we didn't play that bad. We didn't we didn't shoot particularly well, but we didn't play. You know, it wasn't after the game. He said, "Yeah, we played terrible. We didn't play that well. That was just an exceptional team." And. We got beat by 24 or something, and that was their closest game. And they went on to win state up in Washington, and you know, and were ranked. So it wasn't anything that, to be ashamed of, but it was something that 
kind of lets guys know that, you know, basketball is played beyond. Sometimes we get used to just living here in Carson City, but basketball goes beyond these walls. And it, it was it was a good experience. I mean, I didn't like sitting through it, but it was a good experience for them. Uh, we go down to Vegas, We and that was probably the biggest confidence booster because we go down there and we, we play pretty well. We beat Palo Verde, we lose to Durango, and we beat Cimarron, and Palo Verde and Cimarron both got to the semis in the zone down there. So it wasn't like it was a fluke, and but we, we played pretty well down there. We did things that we were capable of doing, and Durango, we played actually pretty well against them. They just blitzed us right out of the chute, and then we outscored them the next three quarters. So that kind of got people talking. You know, when we came into the season, people weren't saying a whole lot, but you go down there, and then they started looking, and all of a sudden, people want to know stuff. And, you know, so things were headed in the right direction at that point. Uh, we come into the Capital Classic and play pretty good the first two nights, and then the third night we just and we'd beaten Elko earlier, and, and for whatever reason, you know, we just didn't play very well. And it was, you know, somewhat of a let. Well, it was a huge letdown. Let's not, yeah, let's not dance around. It was a huge letdown. So, but once again, it's that was and that being the last game of the preseason, it, it's it kind of worries you that. You know, you're going to go from something like that, and you have to bounce back because we kind of divided our season up into three. We had preseason, our regular season, and then the playoffs. And we ended up with the season, like I said, 14-3. and three. And when I looked at the preseason schedule when I got, I mean, I'm telling you, and that's as honest to God, if we had been 7-7, seven and seven, you know, I thought that's about where I thought we would be. And we're 14-3, and three, so at that point, then the expectations jumped a whole bunch. Then people in the paper are writing that we're going to come up and sneak up on people, and, that, and that's kind of what we try to stay away from all year. Just kind of low profile, you know, kind of be the underdog, be the Tom Mowers every single game. So kind of that kind of thing. So uh, going into the the season, you know, we thought that we were going to be in in pretty good shape. Uh, throughout the season, we played pretty well. Played pretty well, with the exception. We all know the one game, all right, that will haunt us. And it was Douglas at Douglas. And up to that point, we, you know, we had Reno, you know, we played them twice and had lost to them and didn't play very good against Douglas at home and lost. But going down there, we were, we were ready to play. And we, we played well. I mean, we had seven more field goals. I mean, I could go on with the statistics, but the bottom line, for whatever reason, the free throw line just was not very <laughs> kind to us that night, which was unusual for us, and we hadn't experienced that because that was something that, up to that point, where we were winning a lot of ball games, and so for, for whatever reason, it, it just didn't happen. And you know, they, they they played good enough to win. I mean, they shoot 24, or 27 free throws, and if you do that, you know you're going to win a lot of ball games. So. It was kind of, it was a letdown. There was no, there was no doubt about that. And once again, we had to come from something that was a complete low and bounce back. And we had to bounce back. And it didn't end up hurting us in the season, one way or the other. But going into the South Tahoe game, if we would have lost at home and Hug would have beat Wooster, or Wooster would have beat Hug, then we were looking at fourth place or something. And, and it wasn't only that; it was. Being your last game at home, you had, you know, uh, seniors who wanted to show something, and we came out and played real well. Okay, I mean, it, as bad as it was at Douglas, was kind of as good as it was that night against them. And uh, that's, if, you know, that's the one good thing about, you know, athletics. It's the, the loss is quickly forgotten if the win comes next. All right, the win is quickly quicker to be lost if the loss comes next, believe me. So, but that was a good way to end it. I mean, we played exceptionally well. And, and just bouncing back in order to do that was, you know, was good to see. And it was good for them to put on a, a good show for the fans before uh, it was over. Uh, like I said, end of the season, 19 and nine, you know, pretty happy. And what was good is the, the kids got a lot of compliments. You know, uh, in the paper they started talking about them, and other coaches, you know, you, 
they're playing hard, they're doing this, they're doing that. And as a coach, you know, I know a lot of you in here have coached before. If you can get them to do that, you know, wins and losses, I think, to a point we're judged too much on. But, you know, that's kind of the, the nature of the beast. And uh, it was good to see that our record was good. But not only that is that the guys were performing and they were doing things that they had to and people were taking notice. And, and that's always good to hear, you know, it's, you know, you go to all league meetings, you talk to coaches or people in the press, and, you know, for any of you that follow the, on the internet, they have the Nevada Prep Sports, and they're, they're fairly objective, they're not, there's not a whole lot of politics involved, so they write pretty much bare bones stuff, and the guys got a, a ton of compliments in there, just from what they were accomplishing, accomplishing, because we didn't, you know, even though we're going to think we were big this year, we were a lot smaller next year, but we weren't a very big team in a pretty big league this year. And a lot of guys we had playing out of position. And by that we mean we had post players that, you know, weren't really post players, weren't used to playing the post, but in, in order for the team's sake, they had, to, they had to make the sacrifice. And they did it very well. And with that and everybody just kind of putting their part in. I mean, this was a team where everyone pretty much had, you know, you hear a coach say, he's, a, he's got a, a role player. Well, sometimes role players don't show up in box scores, but we actually had a team of role players. Now, their job may have been to score, their job may have been to rebound, play deep, whatever it happened to be, but we had a team of role players. And that's why, we, I mean, if you were to say, you know, do we have a team MVP? No, not in my, not in my book. I mean, it's, it was kind of a, a collection of everything. People tend to look at who's the highest in the box score, but you know as a coach, you don't really look at that because somebody's getting a lot of points in the box score for a reason because four other guys or seven other guys or 11 other guys are doing things that are making that, making sure that that takes place. So that kind of wraps up, that's kind of synopsis of the, the season. And like I said, we were happy with the outcome we go to McQueen, which wasn't a very good, we, we didn't think that it was a good draw for us because we had played them, you know, up at Incline. We used to go up there during the week and they just used to kick the crap out of us. I mean, and that's, and it, and that's there's no doubt about it. And so it wasn't a, it wasn't a very good match. We'd have much rather had a foul in here because we would have had a better, we would have basically had a better shot. But we go over there and we were playing well at that time. Like I said, we played well. For our last four games, we played good against Douglas, South Tahoe. So we were we were fairly confident, and they were worried. And we go into the game, and we led most of the game. You know, most of the game. And the the bottom line, what happened there is bodies. You know, we ran out of gas. We simply ran out of gas, which what happens? They they had by far the best team they've ever had there, and they were they were deeper and stronger than we were. And and sometimes that happens, but for it wasn't a game that you would hang your head about. I know I'm not much into moral victories, but if you were to get a moral victory, that was uh, to see what we had done from June and July playing them, and then go up there and do that on their home floor. You know, it was kind of a testament of how far the kids had come, and and that was just by their hard work and kind of believing in themselves and not not believing all the hype about this team and that team and just going out there and playing and, and I truly believe you know if you know another day's rest or something here and there you know we would have been fine we just simply ran out of gas it had they gave every bit of energy they had and, and so that's kind of the way the season ended and unfortunately for every team ex with the exception of Western this year everybody ends the season on a loss you know that's that's what's not real good about coaching because you have to end the season on a loss but you can take those losses for different things. We played well, we had character, we had improved. So you, you take those things and you accept the loss. All right? Because I've been in instances where that last loss is by 45, which is not real slick. And then you try to make sense of that through the whole end of the season and say, well, well if we would have, no, 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 would have nothing. 45 is 45. So uh, the good thing is we were in that game, had a chance to win it, and for whatever reason, you know, got beat that night. The cards just weren't in our favor. So uh, with that aspect, we, we were happy. Uh, now what I'd like to do is, you know, call up the individual players. When, when I call your name, if you come up here, I'd like to, I'll say a couple lies about you and I'll get this one. Uh, 
first is uh, Ryan Henry. Most of you know Ryan is only a sophomore. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I called him in and I gave him the option of whether to stay up on the varsity or to go down to the JV. And you know, and his role was defined. I mean, he knew what it would be. You'll be a supporting cast if you get in. That's icing on the cake. But we have you here to help the team. And you know, and I, he came to me, and it, it actually really wasn't an issue with him. He just said not whatever I can do to help, which as a sophomore is, is nice to see because he easily could have went to the JV team and you know, pretty much did whatever he wanted. So he had to come, come with us and his role was defined. And not only uh, is, was he a good player and improved in the, the games he got in, he, you know, he didn't play like a sophomore. And so that'll end up helping him in the long run and will help us as a program in the long run. And, not only is he a good player, but he was also a scholar athlete and one of six on our team this year who was named to the state academic team with a 4.0. So that's even you know more commendable than the rest. So looking forward to that. Sport athlete at Carson High, football player, basketball, throws a shot, throws a disc. Uh, what Josh kind of by playing football and coming into a new system, it was kind of he was at a disadvantage because we had put a lot of stuff in during class, and so by the time football ended, he got there, and for no fault of his own, he was kind of behind everybody. Uh, it he worked he worked at it hard, and uh, like I said. The only guy that wasn't glad to have him around was in Gleema. I mean, he used to say, don't have Josh guard me today. <laughs> Play the shell drill and Vince, no, no, don't have Josh guard me. Because Josh is a fairly strong guy here, you know, and Vince is, you know, working on it. <laughs> so, needless to say, you know, Josh will be a big part of what we do this year because even with football and all that, we won't change a whole lot of things and he'll come in knowing everything and all he'll have to do is get into basketball shape. I mean, he's, he's been in the program since seventh grade. I mean, he'll have some big shoes to fill, but I'm confident that he can do it. Now, in terms of Josh, he's like a parent's dream on a road trip. Let me tell you that. He doesn't say a word. No. I mean, every once in a while, you turn around the van and just ask a question. Say, hey, you all right back there? Does not, no, he doesn't speak. So I'm thinking, Man, a road trip in your family. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it was kind of nice. I mean, getting the road trip, I go, hey, Josh is with me. So, a couple of those other guys get a little excited once they get in the car. They think you're going to Wally World or something. So, uh, and, and again, Josh is one of the six people who was a scholar athlete and state academic, and he also has a 4.0. So, like I said, he should be commended for that, and we're looking forward to him next year. Okay, uh, Steve here is, is probably one of the best athletes, if not the best physical athlete on our teams, just in terms of quickness, jumping ability, you know, start, stop, start, that kind of things, and in, and in drills and, and things such like is that. Uh, Unfortunately for Steve, he had you know some heavy hitters on the varsity who had been there and put in some time. And but he did, he never complained in practice. He came every single day, even a couple times when he's hurt. You kind of had to get him to sit down or being sick because he always wanted to play. And without practice players that will do that and help the guys that are are, are playing the majority of the game, the guys that are playing the majority of that game aren't going to get any better. And He'll be kind of in the same boat as Jeff was this year. He's going to have to learn on the job. I mean, that's kind of, unfortunately, a lot of times that's what happens. And uh, as long as he continues, he's a, he's a multi-sport guy as well. And, you know, his time is like a lot of others in here. 
is kind of stretched thin. I mean, he's sprint from one thing, have to put something on hold to do another thing, and kind of, kind of, you know, which is good though. I think that's good in high school. I don't, I don't think that anybody should put all their marbles in one basket. I think high school is high school. Have fun, play as much as you can, and you know, and play enough of each one so so you become a good player. And and he did that last year, and I'm sure that he's going to do that this year. And he's one of the guys that we have returning back that is going to be fighting to fill some big shoots, all right, because. You know, he's a guard, and point guard, maybe off guard, and in high, at the high school level, and actually at any level, that's a hard position to play. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, and you know, a lot of headaches from me, obviously. But you know, I, I'm sure that you know he will be he, he will be fine. And so, I'm looking forward to having him back next year. I think he has a good future with us. Good. Okay, Mr. McKenzie. Here's one of the most stubborn guys you'll ever meet. So, uh, you know, Adam kind of, he, he played his role and, and he played it well. He's a tenacious defender. I mean, that's kind of what he likes to do. You know, it's didn't rub off on everybody, but that's kind of like what he likes to do, and that's kind of, he takes pride in that, he takes pride in that in class during, to, to right now we're playing in class, and he takes, he takes pride in that, which is, you know, good to see. Uh, again, he is, he's a guy that will either get to play the one spot or the two spot for us, it kind of just depends on how people and, you know, what kind of lineup, he has the ability to play either one, so it'll be kind of, what kind of lineup we're looking for after we evaluate after the spring and summer. He's a very good shooter. I mean, he brings a lot of things to the table. And what he, what he does is some of that stubbornness, is, you know, is good. It is good to a point, even though many remember it. <clears throat> remember many a time saying, that guy's just a tad bit quicker than you. You want to give him just a step and look out there and here we go. So <laughs> next thing you know, boom, he just looked over at me and I actually didn't even look over, he just started jogging over to me. You know. So he pretty much got that part down. So after the season it progressed though, you know, it got to where give him a step, he gave him a step, like about four. He just kind of kept looking over at me. But in, in terms of what we have coming back, he's one of the guys that got a lot of minutes for us. Uh, he'll be one of the guys that the other guys on the team will look up to because, you know, of the minutes that he did get and what he brings to the table. And just by how hard he works in practice and what he's going to do is the guys that we have coming up, that'll rub off. You know, we're, we're in the process now of getting everyone with that attitude. And by the end of the season, we were almost there. We were almost there. And, you know, and for the first year and then having him come back, that, that'll be a great start because he will, he will make other guys be accountable, which is something that we will need next year. So that's Adam. Next, we have Vince Inglima. Uh, Vince is one of those guys. When I first got the job, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't even know who Vince was, and I don't think a lot of other people did either. He came back like a foot and a half taller. So I remember the first couple of days in practice, I just looked at him. Oh, he's six three. He's going to the block. So he and not knowing his background or what he was comfortable doing. And so we set him down to the block and he's getting pushed around and pushed out and this, and falling down. I asked Carlos, I go, who in the heck is that kid? He goes, ah, and some other kid came up and goes, oh, he was only 5'8 before he left. I go, well, that might explain a lot of things. And he is a, a gym rat. He is one of the guys coming back next year. He will be, without a doubt, one of the best players in the league next year. You know, the other coaches are already talking about it. He'll, he'll have big shoes to fill uh, because he was only counted upon to do a specific number of things, whereas next year that list will be completely full. He'll be counted on to do a lot of things for a score, rebound, be a leader. All of the things that he watched the seniors do this year, he will be expected to do. Uh, in terms of, he's another guy that we played out of position, okay? He's a, probably a natural, you know, three guy, he's a guy that likes to face the basket, but we threw him down on the block, and 
a guy that went from where he was in the spring, he has as good a post move now as you know anyone that I've coached. So, and I remember Chandler saying in practice one day, he goes, if you were 6'5", you would be untouchable. So we're kind of holding off that maybe that sprout's going to happen again because <laughs> unfortunately for Vince, he's going to be one of the, the bigger guys. And what he will do with that is he'll create mismatch problems because he will now be able to go outside, inside, bring the ball. He's one of the guys that could legitimately play all five spots for us. He can bring it so because he's had experience doing all of them, so he's someone that will be able to fill a lot of shoes and a lot of holes that, w that we might have next year. And, 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 and that's invaluable. Uh, again, he's a, a scholar athlete as, as well. He was a state academic. He's a perfect 4.0. Uh, he was honorable mention, all league. He was athlete of the week. And I think with, with the recognition the coaches were even saying at the all league meeting, hey, you guys will be right with everybody because of the people that we have coming back. And he is definitely one of those guys. And like I said, he's only going to get better. We'll put a little bit of muscle on him and do some things that need to be done. But he's such a, a gym rat and loves to play that by next year, I, I will pretty much guarantee that he, if things keep progressing, you know, he, he's a first team all leaguer without a doubt. So that's Vince. Oh my God. <laughs> so 
No, but it, but, it, but in all seriousness, he he will definitely be one of the guys to reckon with next year, and he will have a lot of responsibility. But, but I'm sure he'll be up to the task. That's right. stand at once and not leave until I get through everybody. <laughs> Alright, the first guy, let's see, here, let's start with Rick. Uh, Rick was, and most guys don't know this about Rick, Rick is a pretty funny guy. I mean, he, he's got one-liners that are I mean, he's quick-witted. He's got one-liners that are, are pretty quick. I think Vince has heard them all now, so he doesn't particularly think he's that funny anymore. But I just got him in class, too. And, you know, he's a good student, uh, and, except he's missed my last couple days. But other than that, he's, he's a pretty good student. Uh, he, he fell into an area where when he was a freshman, he played in California. And so he got accustomed to doing what they wanted him to do. And then he moves here. And then he's got Coach Andreessen asking him to do another thing. And then I come along and I'm expecting another thing. So it, it was unfortunate for him because it was, I mean, if I said I wouldn't even give him this mic because he'd written me about something real quick and I wouldn't even have a comeback for it. So uh, uh, he's the kind of guy that I wish I would have one more year. You know, you always say that, but with him that's, that's true because it was just, I could see the transition. It was happening, but... Again, only getting one year with me and trying to do, I mean, trying to change what you were accustomed to doing, not once, not twice, but three times, that, that's difficult to do. And, you know, like I said, it, it was a pleasure to, to coach him. You know, he's a great kid. He's fun to have around. You know, I like, I just look him up sometimes and talk to him because he'll have a, a one line. If your day's down, he'll have something funny to say. So I, I look forward to that, and that's Rick.
Chandler is what you would describe as, he's another kid that I had played for me in, in junior high and transformed from junior high. I mean, he grew, lost weight, did this, got quicker. I mean, there, there were more changes that happened to him than any guy I've ever seen. I was going, you got to be kidding me. So uh, what he brought to the table is he was kind of the, the enforcer, kind of tough guy, kind of, you know, go into the game and give up his body, do whatever he kind of had to do. I mean, try to take charges, was always on the floor, was always scrapping, was always doing something that would help us. Uh, he would, you know, never back down to anybody, just go in and play every single second. And to be honest, I never seen a guy that liked practice that much. I mean, guys would be dead tired, you know, hoping something would end and you'd have Chandler over there going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and guys used to get ticked off. Shut up, Tim. Shut up. I mean, I'd be saying, God, are they not tired yet? And so it, it was that kind of thing. I mean, he just he just had a good time. I mean, we'd do shell drill, which is defense, and you get to bang around, and he's the first one in it, and guys are going around his screen. Uh, that's going to play right in years later. So, uh, but it was one of those guys that you, you loved having when you taught him. When you looked at the box score, you didn't see his name doing a whole lot of stuff. But as a, as a coach, I mean, you understood what he did. And, and we understood it. There was no doubt what he contributed to the team because you need a guy like Chandler every year. I mean, you need one. We're looking. We'll have to find one next year. All right, there's some guys that have the potential to fill his shoes, but what he brought to the table, I mean, it, it's just hard to describe because he is the ultimate scoring did not matter to him. He'd make the extra pass. He was more uh, concerned about taking a charge, doing things like that, that would make him, make the team a lot better. And, you know, we had to encourage him. I used to yell at him in practice, will you shoot the ball, shoot the ball, shoot the ball, and then Ryan tell him, just pass it here. <laughs> Fed off of that a little bit. So uh, again, he's one of the. You know, we used to take. We took our books on the road. That was kind of. We made sure that. You know, it's by no means did that have a lot to do with, with the why they're all academic. But you know, I walk around. You know, try to help. I got the Chandler, but I'm like, what in the heck is that stuff you're doing? I mean, there's not a chance I can do any of that. So he's very intelligent. He's 4.0 grade point average. All academic, all state. Will he will succeed in pretty much anything he does because he doesn't get overly serious about it in terms of not being able to have fun with it. And he's such a hard worker, and he does that in the classroom, and that should be commended as Chandler. Uh, next, we have Benny. Considered probably around the league, and obviously by us, he he's what you call a pure shooter. I mean, if you were to watch him shoot a basketball, I mean, everything is is pretty much textbook. It, it, what he, that's what I'm saying, all this nice stuff. Uh, in terms of what a shooter is about, if you were to watch him and analyze his shot, I mean, it, it's he's a pure shooter and. What he experienced this year, which happens, is he didn't sneak up on anybody. He had too many big shots last year to sneak up on anybody. He's played more games than all of us combined in here. And what he, what he was faced with is the best perimeter defender on every team guarded Benny. That's just kind of the way it was. And so he was a lot of times, you know, not able to get as open as he would like to. Uh, but but what I would like to commend him on, in which he never took bad shots. You know, when, if his shot wasn't going, it just wasn't going. I mean, that had nothing to do with it. Sometimes you get guys that are used to scoring and used to shooting, and they're not getting the shots they want, so they're going to change a lot of things and, you know, force shots. And that, I can remember, I can't remember maybe at one or two times in all year that he took what I would consider a bad shot. And, you know, no matter how many points he had, and he's another guy that once he got it going, he got it going. I mean, he 
He showed people we played South Tahoe. He tied the three-point record down at the Amador Valley for the tournament. I mean, he can flat fill it up. And he showed that at Tahoe. You know, he came out and simply decided that he was going to end on a good note. And, and he did. And he did at Douglas. And he did. If we would have had, because there was a, a couple of games in there where he, he felt that he wasn't shooting particularly well. And, you know, when you have shooters, you know, that's kind of something we've had to live with here because we don't, have a whole lot of big guys that, you know, it, you got to shoot yourself out of it. There's nothing, there's not a whole lot you can do. You know, you miss 10, well, you get, or get up the 11th, you know, because that that's just the nature of the game. Any good shooters you've seen, you know, if everything, and they're taking good shots and they're open shots, you know, you have got to take the shot. And, and Benny had the green light pretty much whenever he did. And it's going to be strange next year watching someone, you know, run the right side of the court and, because he, that was kind of his side and him pulling up and shooting, that's kind of something that he will be remembered for. He's as good a shooter, and I've been around here a long time, he's as, he's as good a shooter to ever come through Carson High. I mean, I can't, I mean, there's a couple guys that might give him a run for his money, but he's as good as anyone that, that I have seen in terms of just being able to shoot. Uh, he did other things as well. You know, he picked up his defense this year. I mean, he took pride in that. He improved his game as an all-around player as much as anyone this year because he was known as a shooter, but when things weren't going his way, he picked it up on defense, which sometimes, especially when you're a senior and, you know, you're, you haven't been accustomed to doing it and you've just been shooting jump shot, sometimes that's hard, but Vinny's an all-around player. I mean, he's been in this Memorial League here for like 12 years now. He gets a new shirt every year. And, <laughs> Uh, he's a guy that loves to play, goes to all those tournaments, I mean, just plays, just played one last weekend, just loves the game, and that's what has made him a good player. Uh, again, he's a scholar athlete, he was, he uh, was first team all conference, uh, scholar athlete, made all tournament teams, all academic, all state, athlete of the week, I mean, the, what he accomplished in basketball is kind of secondary to what he does in the classroom, because he's a very good student, and he takes that, he takes that seriously, and, you know, that's good to see. I mean, he's one of, like I said, a lot of guys on this team, which I think our overall grade point average was 3.65, which is pretty darn good. Uh, so I will, he will be sorely missed. You know, um, there, there's, not, there's nobody that's going to replace him. Somebody will take his spot. But a player like him, you just kind of, you, you treasure that you had him. And when he leaves, you kind of look down the bench, but someone will step into his spot, but uh, he will not be forgotten anytime soon. That's Benny. Right. Uh, next we have Jeff Young. Uh, Jeff's another uh, individual who I had in junior high, and when I had him in junior high, he just, he was a little left-handed kid, a little tiny kid, about as strong as he is now, but that's about, you know, <laughs> didn't grow a whole lot that way, but a guy that, uh, you know, did pretty much, I didn't ask him to do a whole lot. I just asked him, you know, please get the ball off the floor. Please don't turn it over. Please guard their best player. Please make sure we're in offense, and if we got a problem, come see me. The other than that, have a good time out there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and everyone we were talking about, or I was talking about it to some of the parents here, you know, and uh, my mom used to call me and say, would you leave that kid alone? <laughs> so not only do I have to deal with this, I got my own mother saying, will you leave him alone? Will you leave Kevin? Will you leave Ryan? I mean, so, it, so everybody has to answer to somebody, and answering to your mother is not real slick, especially when she doesn't like the way that she, you you are handling things. Uh, Jeff learned a long time ago to pretty much tune me out. You know, I think he he figured that out that uh, you know he's gonna you know he'll get excited, he'll do his thing. But playing the point guard position, and I'm telling you, is a tough. You get blamed for everything. I, I mean, you know, forgot the tape. Well, Jeff, did you get the tape? I mean, it, everything was pretty much his fault. Something wrong on the team. I get a guy out of class. I'm calling Jeff. What in the heck? So he's got a lot of things that he, he realistically learned on the job. He didn't, you know, this was the first time we just threw him into the fire and said, hey, you know, you're going to start at the point guard. And from where he came in the summer, I mean, 
he just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and sometimes that, you know, that, that is about the only way you can do it. And in practice, I mean, it, it, it's amazing to see what he did on the floor. I mean, we asked him to play the top of the press, do the trap and bring the ball. I mean, a lot of stuff. And I, and he's not the biggest guy in the world. So people kept saying, hey, you're gonna, that kid's going to run out of gas on you. He's going to run out of gas. And that's kind of, you know, you worry about that. But then knowing him like I do, I said, you know, he'll be all right. You know, I'll just, you know, yell a little louder and everything will be all right. So uh, in, in terms of that, he, he did, you know, just an outstanding job. Uh, the last half of the season, he was as good as any guard in the league, in my opinion. You know, I would, because he fulfilled his role. Now, most people don't know that he's a very good shooter, all right? But he put that on the burner. He could easily, in the right situation he would play in the two spot for a lot of people because he can flat shoot the ball too but he understood his role i'll bring it up i'll get us into offense i will do this i will do that and you know and it's that kind of unselfishness that wasn't reading the box score and just kind of knew what he was doing to, to help us win the game and did that night in night out and you know came straight from cross country you know it's it, it, it's commendable uh there's, he will be someone that, you know, will be tough to replace too. He'll be tough because you get so used to looking at somebody out there and their tendencies and now somebody else comes along. And it, it's one of the guys that, you, you know, you wish you would have had him, you know, a couple of years other than just one because one more year, if I could have had him last year and this year, you know, he, his, his senior year could have just been, you know, explosive because he has that kind of, of ability again, he was named uh, second team all conference, you know, and that and that's big coming from a guy that doesn't score a lot of points. That is big because they don't. Sometimes people just learn to look at box scores, but other coaches in the league thought seeing what he did for us. I mean, they, they realized that without him out there running, we weren't ticking so well. I mean, we could put other people in the spot, but you know, you you get comfortable. The other four guys get comfortable with him and. You know, he was done. He's another one that is, uh, you know, great student, all academic, scholar, athlete, uh, athlete of the week. So he, so he's been recognized for, for what he has done. But he is someone that you know I've enjoyed coaching, and you know I know that whatever he do, whatever whatever he do, whatever whatever he does in the future, you know he'll be good at it because he's one of the guys you know that goes all out and gives 100 percent and doesn't say much, just gets the job done, and that's great to see. We got here, Cody. Uh, let's see, uh, Cody's been on the varsity for nine years now, or at least it's. I mean, he's been around a long, long time. I mean, I have people going, "You got Cody back again? Yeah, I got him back again. How long has he been playing?" I used to hear that kind of stuff all the time. He's uh, he's been a leader, you know, since junior high. I mean, his ability was shown that he was brought up as a, as a sophomore. He adapted well. He's one of the guys that, you know, had to play for a couple of different coaches and different philosophies and, you know, coming into it, not being, you know, sure of what was going to be expected and used to being, you know, doing things in a particular way. And we, we changed that a little bit, you know, and I think it made him a better all-around player. Uh, it, it was to the point where, you know, on most teams, if he would have been on a lot of teams in the league, he would have been the focal point. Like we're throwing it to Cody every single time, but he had a he had a good cast around him, and he was confident of what of what they could do to make the team better. And you know, he's a he's a tough matchup. I mean, he is a tough matchup because he's a he's a natural outside shooter. He's a three guy, but you know, like Vince, he's one of the bigger guys. So he had to, he had to play on the block a lot. He you know had to go in there guard big guys do things, play with his back to the basket, do things that, you know, sometimes don't come natural. Sometimes people think that the, making that transition is easy, but it, but it, it really, it, it's, it's not. And he's a, one of the guys that, you know, basically played all five spots for us. When we got in a little bit of trouble, if things got down, we, Cody could bring it. Cody could play the two, he could play the three, play the four, he could play, I mean, he could do pretty much uh, everything for us. Uh, he brought, what he brought to the table more than any of that, though, was he, the leadership, the guys, you know, they looked up to him because he had been there for so long. I mean, he is, it'll be strange next year not seeing 
Cody out there because it's become, you just get used to so many things and being on the team and being such an instrumental part of the team, it's not like he was on the team for three years, it was he was a huge part of the team for the three years that he was on there. And, you know, he handled that well. I mean, in fairness to Cody, you know, what, what happened to him a little bit this year and uh, he'd get the ball inside and he didn't get a lot of calls this year. And for whatever reason, I think officials were so used to seeing him around that they they tend to believe that he should, you know, where another guy would get the call, he won't get it because they just expect that he should be able to make that shot with a little bit of contact. And and that kind of comes with the territory. I mean, he was a he was a marked man. There's no doubt about it. I mean, a lot of gimmicks that we've seen were designed to stop Cody. And he filled that role pretty well. I mean, we'd use him as a decoy when we had to. We'd use him as a scorer. And he, this year he had a couple phenomenal games. Against Centennial, he you know, simply did whatever he wanted to do in that game. And that's he has the ability to do those kind of things. And he's going to have a chance to, to go on and play if he chooses to. You know, I think he's undecided right now about, you know, after it comes to an end, as a senior, sometimes you're not used to it. I mean, and then you got to make some, some tough decisions from here on out of what you want to do, you know, and things like that. And I think he's in the, the, the process of doing those types of things. Uh, in terms of accolades on the basketball court, he all tournament teams, he was all tournament of the, of the Capital Classic, he down in Amaro Valley, Reed tournament. I mean, so the basketball awards he's pretty used to. I mean, he's been getting them for, for quite some time. But what he did in terms of helping us make the transition is he did what we asked. And so that kind of follows it. Well, you know, if he's doing it, then we're going to do it. And, and you know, it, sometimes people kind of overlook those kind of things, but that's as important as anything when it comes to, you know, trying to create a team and trying to create a philosophy that everyone will buy into. And like I said, he's a, he's a great kid. He's, you know, fun to have around. I enjoy talking to him. Seems like I've known him forever. And he's been a big part of this program. And he, he will not be forgotten for some time because he's one of the, the best players who, to come through Carson High. And, and we were kind of lucky, and I was lucky enough to coach him, and you all were lucky enough to watch him. So uh, with that, you know, I wish him the best. And, you know, I hope that he continues to come around because I like having him around. That's Cody. Okay, now with these seniors here, uh, we all know they're leaving the house, you know, and mom's not taking care of things, and dad's not taking care of things, and I won't be around to do things, and so they're going to have to start doing some things for themselves, and Coach Bendigy and I were thinking, you know, what, what could we do to kind of help them along in that, that transition, because sometimes it's difficult, and uh, so we kind of looked at each guy, and we said, oh, well, here's what we can do for him, and the first guy we figured we could help a little bit was uh, Nick. And I don't know if any of you guys have seen it before, but all our guys like to wear those muscle shirts or whatever they are. And so and they, don't, they don't wear their jersey in practice while we're shooting the layups. And so Coach and I are looking at you know Nick one time, and I'm like, dang, that shirt is tight. And so we let him go through a little ways, and, call him over all serious and say, hey, that shirt's pretty tight. And he just kind of looks at us and says, it's a large. <laughs> said, large? I mean, and so what I did is I went out. And I got him a package. And I didn't even have to get a large. I went to the men's and got a medium. And it might be too big. It comes with a, a size chart and, and things like that. So, you know, hopefully when he's out of the house and, you know, no one's there to take him shopping, that he'll at least get pointed in the right direction. And this might burst his bubble because it, I think he thought he was a little bigger than he is. <laughs> now, hopefully, you know, hopefully this will help somebody. guy we have here is Chandler. Uh, if anyone, well, some people have, if you've ridden around with him, went to a game anywhere, he's got that duck calling stupid thing. Like, 
always have this. Everywhere we went, I'm talking in the van, in the restaurant, I got stuck on an elevator when we went out. I said, you got to be kidding, what the heck is it? And we got a lot of hunting dudes on this team. And I said, is there a chance? And it got to a point where people were staring at us all the time. Is there a chance you put that thing away? You know, so, you know, I started thinking, and, you know, hunters are a little, when season gets around, they get a little wacky, get a little antsy. You know, they are frigging it, so I'm, I'm concerned about his safety a little bit. So when I got him, just to make sure, When he's out with that duck thing out, I just like him to wear this, because if not, he's going to get his butt shot. I mean, someone's going to turn around and say, hear the noise, and they're going to let loose. So, you know, hopefully this, you know, his mom and dad will rest, rest a little bit easier just knowing either put that thing away or you're going to have to wear this, you know, even more, no matter where you're at. Next year we have uh, Jeff Young, and uh, I don't know how many of you know it, but he's joining the Navy when he graduates. And I started thinking about that, I was like, man, out there on the ship doing all that? And there was a couple of things I was going to get, but then I, I thought, you know, I can get in the Clippers because that hair gets crazy sometimes, and, you know, but I figured they would at least take care of that. But, you know, what I started thinking is, you got to... A guy fresh into the Navy, I know he likes to play basketball, I'm sure he'll continue to play. And, you know, every once in a while during the season, Jeff threw the ball and there wasn't anybody there. <laughs> you know, so basically what happens is the ref goes, gets the ball, I yell at him a little bit, and things go on. You know, so there's not a whole lot of harm done. I I'm figuring he's going to be on the ship in the middle of the ocean, he's going to throw one of those passes, the ball's in the water and somebody's got to go get the ball, and the young guy on the crew is the guy that's going to have to go get the ball. And so you hear that say, he can't shoot it in the ocean. Well, he's going to have the opportunity to shoot it in the ocean. And so I, you know, and being a little guy, you know, I, he's not going to have much choice, especially when he gets in the Navy. And so what I did is I went out and got him a life preserver that I like him to wear. So when he's playing in those games and he throws one of those passes, as long as he just play with this, he can put it under his shirt or whatever. When the ball goes over, it can kind of just all be in one motion. And then we can, you know, all, all live a little bit easier. And then maybe a turnover won't be that bad on the ship either. But, you know, so, you know, hopefully this will help in some way. And, you know, he'll be able to come back to us all here. And uh, Coach Ben DeGia is going to hand out the next three here. Okay, before I get started, I just want to thank everybody for coming out, and <laughs> also I want, to, I want to say one thing, when, when Coach Barnes called and said he was uh, thinking about applying for the job and asked uh, if I would help the coach if he had the opportunity to get the job, I, I started thinking about it, it was a unique situation where a lot of coaches don't get the opportunity to coach somebody that they already coached at a younger age, and for those of you that don't know, when Coach Barnes was at Eagle Valley coaching an eighth grade team, I was over at Carson Middle, and these seniors were, were eighth graders at the time. And uh, it's ironic, I was talking about Vinny shooting. He got a good introduction uh, at Eagle Valley when Vinny single handedly beat Eagle Valley. <laughs> shooting the things. <laughs> that was the day he knew without Vinny. <clears throat> <laughs> But it was, it was a pleasure seeing these young men at such a young age and, and grow up and become young men and, and great athletes. And being able to be part of them growing up like that was just a great feeling to have. And I just want to thank Coach Barnes for giving me that opportunity to let me be part of this program. Because these guys, it's a job. When you, when you have a job and you come every day and you're, and, it's, and you're having a good time being at work, and our job was to coach these guys, and it was just very enjoyable to be there every day with these guys. Every day, every loss that we had or a win that we had, it was just some of the guys, that, some of the personalities that you've had out there just made a, made a smile on your face regardless of what was going on. And 
I just want to thank you guys. Okay. Yeah, first, first person I want to uh, harass here a little bit. Uh, if you if you got to know this guy, Coach Barnes, talking about, about him a little bit a bit ago, and his personality, he's just he's upbeat, happy, go lucky, happy to be there every day. Always has a one liner every day. Comes in strutting with his and. I think Nick and you guys must go shopping together. They love the white <clears throat> tank top type shirts. They always come to practice, walking in, basketball class. And Rick here, every day, as you notice, his cell phone's already ringing twice in a half hour. <clears throat> Comes into class, his phone's ringing, buzzing. <laughs> and what I thought I'd do for him is just get him a little starter kit in case his battery went low. And uh, if he's in his car and needs to talk, I got him a little starter kit here, which, uh, let me grab this for you. I got him a cell phone with a pager. In case the cell phone runs dead, he still has a pager. He can still communicate with his friends. Okay. <laughs> There's one more thing. I, I always harass, and the guys know I always harass him. I, if, if you know boxing at all, I used to call him Roberto Duran, and his nickname was Hands, Hands of Stone. And Rick and I went round and round. I was like, you got to use some lotion on those hands. you got to use, use some lotion to soften those things up. And he's telling me, I am, coach, I am. And, and he, I think he was so tense sometimes, the ball would just hit his hands and crumble, and he tried to pick it up. I was like, I'm going to get you some lotion. So finally, I went out and got him some lotion. <laughs> Okay, this, this next one is he is it six years ago when I met him, very quiet, goes around on his own business, doesn't doesn't uh, like to cause any problems, doesn't like to be the center of attention. And when I saw him this year and he had this huge tattoo on his on his bicep, it kind of blew me away. I didn't think that Vinny was the type of guy that would go out and get something like that, which is a great tattoo. I don't know if you've all seen it. And it says pride, and it's, I mean, he has a lot of pride in his uh, Native American heritage. And I, I was kind of skeptical whether his mom agreed with that, and if she was happy with that. And, and I'm hearing Vinny at practice, and, you know, I'm thinking, what's next? Some piercings. You know, maybe some piercings, maybe some more tattoos. So to ease his mom's mind, what I did is I went and got him some, uh, some tattoos. <laughs> These will come off. So whoever gets you urge to get some more tattoos, you can just throw these on right here. Okay, this next one. Up here for sure. Okay. I don't know if it's being part of my envious, uh, but part of, part of this deal was his hairdo here. And there's some things that I just wanted to pass down that I don't have any use for anymore. So, and this is via Douglas High uh, student body and Reno High student body. If you were at the games, they were calling him Pretty Boy. Because if you've seen Cody play, he plays, he plays hard, he sweats, and he's moving around. But that does not ever move. So I was a little jealous. And so I thought I'd pass, out, pass down some of the things that I used to use, and uh, I thought he'd be able to use those here in college for him. So, but I got him this little kit here: shampoo, lotion, some conditioner, okay, some toothpaste, and a nice comb. Okay, got him some hairspray to keep that dude still. <laughs> Two-way mirror. <laughs> some gel.
she and uh, Don as well kept the stats for us, and it's, it's kind of a thankless job. You have to ride with these guys to every single game. You have to listen to them. They all think they had, you know, more assists and turnovers, more rebounds and missed shots. I mean, it, it's an endless job and a thankless job, and we were lucky enough to have them, and and they were knowledgeable, they had played the game, so they were knowledgeable of the game. And a lot of times when you have statisticians, you have to take the game film home and re, you know, do the stats by yourself after you have them to go by. And we did that a couple times, but then after we seen that they were always right. And so we kind of did away with that, and so when we got the stats from them, they were gospel. And I know that they committed a lot of time to this team and, and don't get much recognition, and just for them being able to take out, the, take the time out of their busy schedules and come do this and want to do it and enjoy doing it for the team it is something that you know we really appreciate. So we'd like to thank you. Six, six guy for us, it'd probably put a little, make things a little bit easier, but if not, you know, we'll go to battle with what we got, you know, and I, I think we'll be fine next year. So again, I'd like to thank you. Uh, on behalf of all the guys, we just want to say thanks to Coach Barnes and Gia and everyone for supporting us this year, but especially the two coaches uh, who gave us all a great season to go out on. As a senior, I mean, I maybe beat McQueen, but I had a great year, and it's a perfect way to go out. Uh, it's a year we'll all remember. Uh, so thank you very much for a great season, a great time. And we got you, well, thanks to Sue. <laughs> we got you a certificate of gift service to Adele.
working? Uh, she's out of town. She's at a uh, conference down in Florida. She can just buy the video. Twenty nine ninety five. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thanks, Howard. See ya. <laughs> Thanks for being great. Thanks for being great. 